Welcome to ASMR Math. Now, when I put out the previous video where we talked a little, about, a little bit about the most recent elections coming up in the United States and sort of discussed politics and basically sort of introduced the topic that um, politics is uh, cannot be separate, cannot be, uh, cannot be thought of uh, independent independently from economics right where politics and economics have to be considered and uh, spoken in one breath really because it's one system there is no such thing as politics by itself and economics by itself and once once we accept this once we realize this then um, the world uh, our present society and where we come from and where we're going sort of um, there's a lot of light uh, that shines on what's happened in our society and what is happening in our society. Um, and right now, the present system that we're in is sort of, uh, we're in a system where economics is trumping politics. And we talked a fair bit about that in the previous video where we talked about politics and, uh, and whatnot, connecting up politics, economics, and really looking at our system and defining what it is, right? Now, what I want to do in this video is uh, present some kind of visualization where um, it sort of should bring things into light. Uh, for me, anyway, when I think about our present economic system, our present political system, this is the graph that constantly I envision that comes to my mind when I'm making either business decisions, education decisions, or, or, or whatnot, right? Because uh, this graph, uh, this sort of presentation is uh, is what you should have in mind when it comes to thinking about um, what type of you know career path you're going to take, what you're going to study in school, how much in debt you're going to be, uh, where you're going to get a job, what type of field you're going to work in, okay? And it's something that I talk to my students uh, later on when they're, in general, later on when they're you know, going to be graduating high school and they have to make some decisions of, you know, what they're going to be doing, right? Or if they're going to go into the trades, if they're going to start their own business, if they're going to go into um, post-secondary education, or if they're going to take some technical training, or, or, or whatever it might be, right? Or go travel, right? Uh, whatever it is, um, I sort of talk to them about this, okay? Now, the way you have to sort of think about how our present economic system is set up is basically if you can think about it in the following sense okay let's draw a graph okay we're just going to make a sort of x y axis right cartesian coordinate system so we're going to draw a y axis and an x axis right and what we're going to do on the x axis we're going to put time on here right and in mathematics in a lot of graphs economics uh, and not economics anything that you're a lot of things that you're studying what you end up doing is putting time on your x-axis because time is an independent variable time changes no matter what right you can't prevent time from changing okay so anything that is independent of your control you usually put on the x-axis and what we're gonna do on the y-axis we're gonna put percent market share because what we're gonna do is we're going to look at how our present system functions okay how certain companies functions and what they have to keep in mind and how new companies coming up into the industry what how they can be represented right so what we're going to do we're going to consider this to be percent market share okay so percent market share Now, we're going to draw two lines here. We're going to look at the extremes. And that's one, one thing that mathematics does. Mathematics, it, the power of mathematics comes from, you know, creating models and quantifying those models based, you know, based on some kind of, you know, looking at the world, a situation, whatever we're looking at, analyzing, right? We create models and we quantify whatever system it is that we're looking for right and what we have to do is look at the world look at everything really in times of a system 
in terms of a system, right? And that's what was something I really tried to push um, for the language of mathematics. And um, uh, when, we, when we're doing, you know, we're still in series four, and we've been in there for a while. But uh, one thing I did in the first few videos for series four of the language of mathematics, I really tried to emphasize the point that what we're dealing with is a system, right? And mathematics was basically created for this, to look at any type of system, whatever it might be, and quantify that system. And that's the way we have to look at politics, and that's the way we have to look at economics. Everything in politics and economics is a system. It's based on a model, right, that might be valid or might not be valid. Some of the models throughout history that we thought were valid were invalid. They've collapsed, right? Some of the models that we thought were invalid, they become more valid, right? They become more prevalent within our society. So what we're gonna do is look at everything as a system. And what we're gonna do is look at right now, um, if you consider percent market share versus time for certain companies, right? And we're gonna look at two different types of companies. Companies that are established and companies that are emerging, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna assume that companies that are established have a higher percent market share than companies that are not established, that are emerging, right? So let's put companies that are emerging in the bottom here, right? They have a small market share. Usually when they're just starting off, they're at zero, right? But we're gonna put this at, you know, a little bit above zero, assuming they've done some marketing and they're starting localized, right? Companies that are established are going to have a higher market share, right? And we're not putting any numbers on here. We're trying to do this as a visualization, right? So companies that are established in general have a high market share. And over time, they usually retain that market share unless there's some kind of new innovation coming up from the bottom, which is making some of the technology that they have here, some of the uh, products that they produce here, some of the services that they produce, you know, provide here, if they're established companies, makes them obsolete. And this, this example occurs everywhere. It's continuously changing, it's continuously in flux, right? One of the examples would be, you know, taxi cab drivers, right? That has been established market share for a long time. And then we have new technology coming up, such as Uber and other types of technology, which are making, you know, life for taxi cabs a lot harder, right? Where a license in my part of the world, anyway, a license to drive, um, to have a cab company went from $100,000, $200,000 down to, you know, $5,000, right? And the money that people were making driving taxi cabs becomes harder and harder because new types of innovations coming up. They might be Uber, they might be car share, there might be more bike lanes coming up, they might be more localization, right? Where higher density uh, cities are becoming more high density, where people are living closer to work, so they need less cabs, or they might need more cabs short term, right? They're driving less. That all affects established companies. And this occurs everywhere. Um, another model would be um, media, right? News outlets print news right as soon as the internet came on the scene print media was the first one of the first places to start getting hit right and as soon as um streaming uh video came onto the scene broadcast media started taking a serious hit right and this is everywhere and it's occurred throughout history as well right one of the most um you know greatest inventions in human history uh, in current civilization anyway, is the printing press, right? Which is, you know, compatible to what the internet is, right? But the printing press, initially when it came up, Guten, Gutenberg's printing press in the Western world anyway, I believe uh, China, Asia had that a long time before we did, but in the Western world, we industrialized it. They, they automated it to a certain degree, right? But the first printing press came, when it came up, came onto the scene, established companies established individuals and organizations really didn't like the printing press when it came up and the first company that came up with the printing press that tried to 
get a certain market share went bankrupt right just imagine the first printing press in the world the first company printing press company in the world where they were printing books and literature and newspapers and news and making it accessible to the general public went bankrupt right because of a lot of pressures put on by established industries okay so now that we think about it this way basically the way things work in our current economic system is established companies only stay established for a certain period of time sometimes they're very short sometimes they're extremely long some of the long, longest living companies that have been around are education systems right universities and they've been around for hundreds of years right but what we're seeing right now is because of the internet because of education available online because of cost of going to universities because of the job market because of automation because of a lot of factors involved universities are losing market share and this is basically the graph you should have in mind established companies have market share high market share for a certain period of time and when innovation comes onto the scene this innovation might take a while to get a foothold into the market but what happens is they this new innovation which is this is referred to as disruptive innovation starts to gain market share and established companies start to lose market share okay and this is the model that you should definitely keep in mind this is the visual you should keep in mind and what happens is and this happens you know not on a broad scale across every industry this happens in certain specific industries and it happens also in um, on a broad sense as well maybe because of technological advances or because of policy changes because of um, the way society is moving the direction in which society is moving right and what happens is slowly disruptive innovation picks up all tech all the um, established industries start losing market share and the new companies right that were just barely getting their foothold at the beginning of coming onto the scene are now moving up to become the, the establishment right the established industries and one of the places this has happened is um, I mean one of the largest companies uh, the world has which is Google which isn't really Google anymore it's called Alphabet Inc right so if we change this model change this graph and go on a longer time span right if you want to think about it Google came onto the scene and was basically starting off at zero down here right but we'll start the clock a little bit forward right at the beginning they didn't really have too much of a footprint into our society if uh, you know if, if you know a little bit of history of how Google came to be at the beginning I believe they went to Yahoo and um, offered Yahoo uh, I, I believe it was Yahoo um, a fair chunk of Google for I think it was $150,000 and Yahoo being established because they were the first on the scene with their search engine right um, they had a huge portion of the market they didn't invest $150,000 into Google right which was one of the worst business decisions the world ever, has ever seen right and what happened was basically when Google came onto the scene if this is let's say print media not Yahoo right so let's say Google comes onto the scene the internet comes onto the scene the search engine mainly focus on Google let's say and this is more print media publishing and whatnot right newspapers and media and these guys were established at the time for Google it took a certain amount of time they couldn't even convince Yahoo to invest money in them right and slowly not even slowly there's probably jumps here that occur right there's part of you know Google's history that they had Google video I think it was two years before or a year before YouTube came online and when YouTube came online I think a year later Google bought them out right and there would have been a huge jump right but let's make this a smooth curve and what happened Google started picking up and print media started losing a huge percent of the market where right now they're not down at zero you know they're down here 
and it's slowly going to disappear or consolidate into uh, you know smaller and smaller uh, um, what do you call it uh, newspapers and uh, it's reached a level where there's only a handful of people who control all of print media right on a large scale a uh, handful of organizations and Google has you know taken on a huge percent of the market share when it comes to Google News anyway when you're doing a search and that kicks off into other news sites right because Google is really just a holding company and at some point Google has become establishment but it hasn't become an establishment because they focused just on a search engine right it became part of the establishment controlling everything right based on acquisitions right they they acquire different companies and they expanded their footprint into um, fiber optics and video streaming with Google and um, you know technology with Android and um, all types of stuff right they, they've expanded everywhere where this company is starting off here it was called Google but over here it's no longer called Google it's called Alphabet Alphabet Inc it's now a holding company that um, you know closest analogy I have would be to uh, Berkshire Hathaway like Warren Buffett's company where they got their you know tentacles everywhere right and they're basically a holding company managing all these different types of companies right so this is sort of the type of visual visualization you, you should keep in mind uh, specifically on what's going on uh, with our political system what's going on with our economic system and on a personal level where you want to invest your money where you want to invest your time where you plan on uh, finding work right do you plan on you know if you're working right now or you plan to work in the future and you're planning on starting your own thing or working for someone else where do you plan on getting your knowledge from and investing your time so you, you acquire knowledge are you going to be working in a field that is at the beginning stages of its growth right which where you can think about this as being disruptive innovation right and disruptive innovation is a term that's used i think it became uh part of the mainstream or it was defined in 19 mid 1990s but it's been around for a long time the concept of what happens right where new technology comes along and challenges old technology right so do you do you want to invest your time in disruptive innovation new companies new ideas that are coming on the market that are challenging established companies right or are you going to work in established companies and you know assuming this time frame is beyond your lifespan right or your work your work lifespan this could be a year this could be 10 years this could be 100 years right whatever it is right if this is a hundred years your lifespan might be here then work in established companies might be a good idea but if disruptive innovation is coming up fast and taken away from this job right from the opportunities of growth which is really what our present economic system is based on right is all about growth 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 right so how fast what's the time frame here that you're looking at are you going to be investing your time in established companies and Get your foot in the door and establish companies or create something that people already know about that they're going to consume your product and hopefully you stay in this zone or are you working with disruptive innovation and hopefully kicking into this zone right and if you get in at the bottom here usually you have a high market share when you hit up there right so this is something uh that i sort of talk to my students a fair bit and i do bring this up uh, during political and economic discussions uh, if I'm having with people where uh, this example occurs everywhere and one of the things you keep in mind is um, it's not just you know the two extremes here sometimes there are industries in the middle that aren't don't have a huge market share you know they're here right and the disruptive innovation coming that challenging them is maybe something that was established that's more along the lines of here right sometimes these things fluctuate they're cyclic right goes down comes back up goes down comes back up right and competes with models that do the same thing right possibly possibly so percent market share is 
is sort of relative, right? It's sort of, it really depends on your scale you're looking at. Are you looking at a small scale? Are you looking at a large scale, right? How big do you want to get? Or are you happy with this type of model? Or you want steady state, right? Model. Is the political landscape um, stable enough to allow you to do this, right? Is the political landscape stable enough to allow you to stay, contain huge proportion of the market share for an extended period of time? And if you, if you, if you look at this thing, um, there's a lot of industries that have stayed up here They've had a huge percent of the market share for multiple reasons. One of them being is uh, because of political landscape, right? Politics changes, laws are passed to keep those people in power that are sort of monopoly practices, right? Or these companies up here, whenever they see themselves dipping down, they do a buyout, right? They buy something and that's called mergers and acquisitions. And that's something that happens a lot right now. In, in the last 15 years or so there's been a lot of buyouts a lot of companies have folded or sold out to larger companies that have become part of a larger umbrella Google is one of them they've been on a buying spree for the last 10 years minimum right well since there's in since their inception really they kept on buying smaller and smaller companies where they reached a level where they're buying large companies right pharmaceutical industries do this a lot right they're established they're established their patent laws right that give them patents i don't know how long it is now copyrights and patents they used to be very short now they're 100 years 200 year patents right so they're basically governments passing laws to keep these people in power where prices stay fairly high and if there's any company coming up which is challenging one of their brands they end up buying it out and up they go and all of a sudden if this company is if there's a company here let's assume oh this guy's dried out let's put this guy aside let's assume this is a let's assume the brown is a pharmaceutical pharmaceutical company right going this way their established market and let's assume the purple here is a new pharmaceutical company that has some kind of product that is challenging these guys, right? If they start gaining too much market share, their market capital, capitalization, they're not worth too much, right? Especially if they're on the, um, if they're a private company, they're not, they're not on the markets, they have control over if they can be bought out or not. One of the companies that did this was um, GoPro, right? When GoPro camera came out initially, they were selling the product for you know a few hundred bucks i think three or four hundred bucks or something like this and i believe kodak offered to buy them out right for a nice chunk of money once they started getting a fair bit of market share and was growing really fast but gopro decided not to sell out to them right so these guys this company up here whatever it might be might start losing market share because of this right and what they can do is come up here and offer this company offer to buy out this company and what that does if these guys agreed these guys go up here they retain their market share again right and these guys just become done they got zero market share right they're added a added a gain right or these guys might decide not to sell and these guys market cap collapses and these guys market cap goes up or goes up to a certain level stabilizes in the middle until they come up with new technology and boots them up right and takes these guys completely out of the game okay um for me this is the way i look at our system and extremely important to keep in mind that um right now the present system that we're in right now there's a lot of monopolies um that have that have a huge percentage of market share and that's because laws have been passed to prevent uh, disruptive innovation from getting uh, uh, getting a nice foothold in the market, 
right? There's a lot of rules and regulations possibly preventing from, from the little guy from coming up and getting a fair chunk of the market share here or challenging these people, the companies that have monopolies based on laws passed, right? And that in general is not good for our economic system because it prevents innovation. Because as soon as someone comes up with good innovation, if there's too many, too many rules and regulations preventing them from going up, and there's too many rules and laws being passed to extend these patents, extend these, extend the copyrights and patents and control of these companies that are established, then these companies can't get off the ground and they collapse, right? So if they don't, you know, let's do this in black. If a company comes up here and they keep on hitting hurdles, right? At some point, they're just going to collapse, right? It may be because of patents being extended for the companies that they're challenging, right? And this has happened. Copyrights initially, uh, when they came out, they were, I think, seven years, and then they were extended to 14 years. Now we've reached a level with a lot of trade agreements, which a lot of those international trade agreements are all about preserving the market cap, the market uh, share of established companies already right all of these trade agreements are extending these copyright laws right where copyright laws are now you know life of an author plus a hundred years <laughs> I don't know what they are in my last track right and this also uh, applies to uh, patents and one place a lot of patents um, come into play is technology and pharmaceuticals and pharmaceuticals are huge right there's been patent extensions multiple times multiple times for for a lot of pharmaceutical companies we've reached a level um, specifically in the united states where uh, drugs that have been in play for decades right their patents their uh, are, are, are being renewed because of um, there's new patent laws that came up for new new use patents, right? So if you found out, for example, aspirin was good for headaches and a new use was good, oh, aspirin is good for um, making your blood uh, less viscous, right? So if you, you know, prevent heart attacks or whatnot, that's what they say, right? All of a sudden, that's a new use and all of a sudden the patent is renewed, right? Now, I'm not sure if that's the case for aspirin because I'm pretty sure the patent for that came into uh, the public domain a long time ago. But there's a lot of companies like that where uh, one of the most recent ones was that injection for um, allergies, right? Where in 10 years, the price of that product had gone up 500 fold, 1000 fold, right? Because they were getting extended patents. They had the patent for it, right? So new companies couldn't come up and break through this barrier right so keep this in mind this sort of visualization um, and if you're not thinking about investing in companies uh, if you're not thinking about starting your own companies you should keep sort of this visualization in mind if you're going to be working in a certain industry okay and this is one place where economics uh, is really trumping politics right because a lot of the laws a lot of our systems right now in place are here to protect established companies and not allow for innovation to come up or make it a lot harder anyway um, and that's sort of economics trumping politics because these guys right are not just doing one thing in general there's a lot of mergers you know if a company is going down they keep on buying 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 right Google they didn't get up here just because of a search engine they kept on buying 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 getting their you know tentacles everywhere so they can control many things right and they get huge market share and then they layer layer their products where one is kicking off to the other kicking off to the other okay so this is one visualization I share a lot with uh, some of my students and this comes up a lot in um, when I talk about politics and economics with people okay um, what I'd like to do in the next uh, video, one other thing I'd like to touch, about, touch on is the concept of um, differential accumulation, okay? And it's a really important concept. 
and it's related to capital and specifically capital is power and specifically it relates to um, it is directly related to this and you should keep this in mind when we go on to the next video when we start talking about differential accumulation which is basically the concept the present concept we have in our economic system political system where basically if you're ahead of the game you get to stay ahead of the game because of you know a concept of mathematics which is called compounded interest okay and we're going to do a very simple example of this and there are you know all again for this and for other videos economics that we're going to jump around the favorite i'll provide links in the description um linking up to some of these concepts and for this one it's basically disruptive innovation and um you know established companies keeping their control through patent laws and uh, copyright laws and mergers and acquisitions right that's what's happening here okay um, but very important disruptive innovation that really governs our society that really decides where we're going to go okay and uh, if disruptive innovation is allowed to get a foothold into the markets then we're going to see changes hopefully for the better coming faster than established organizations being given more control and more say into our society right basically become monopoly practices right monopolies in general um, for the most part are pretty destructive to society okay pretty destructive to innovation uh, I hope you liked uh, I'll see you guys in the next video bye for now